Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about poor channels and load balancing in detail. For this discussion, I'll be using this amazing blog post by Christopher Hart on his own website at chrisjhart.com. You can also follow him on Twitter at underscore Chris J Hart. I'll leave links in the description so you can find him and send him some love. Chris, if you're watching this, thank you so much for uh, creating this wonderful post and sharing it. I'll reference it a lot in this video. So let's get started. So why are we even talking about this? Isn't it pretty clear what poor channels do? You can bundle two or more links together logically to get more bandwidth. That's the general idea, right? Well, we're going to look into that and talk about it more. Actually, the timing for this post is excellent because in my previous video, where I quickly shared my thoughts about the network engineer role, I came up with an example off the top of my head, something like enabling maximum bandwidth using the industry standard protocol. And of course, I was referring to creating a port channel. But actually, let's look what it says here on the first lines of this post, right here. A common misunderstanding network engineers have about equal cost multipathing, ECMP and port channels is that they increase the bandwidth that can be used between two network devices. This can be true, but it isn't always true. Isn't that interesting? Let's dive into that. So first, let's go over the scenario. Let me get my pen tool for that. So first, let's pay attention to the network devices in the middle here. So you have uh, uh, two Nexus switches right here, separated by this router. And now here you can see that the switches are connected to the router using these port channels right here. And those two switches are purely layer two devices and the router in the middle acts as a layer three device. So then if you look on the left and right hand sides, you can see these two traffic generators acting as two different hosts on both sides. So host one and host two are in the same subnet 192.168.1.0, I'm assuming it's a slash 24 mask. And then host three and four are going to be in the 192.168.2.0 network. And actually, I don't have to assume a slash 24 network. It is mentioned there, but I just didn't read that far. So that is our scenario. Now let me remove this drawing here. So here it actually said that those are slash 24 networks. Okay, now, so let's think about the load balancing on that port channel. How does that work? So does the switch forward the packets in a round robin fashion, distributing the traffic equally on both links? Or how does it work? Well, this is the question we're going to answer in this video, and we're going to look at this in detail. So let's use the same example that Chris has used in his post. So host one sends a packet to host three. Let me get out my pen tool again so we can uh, point out some information here. So basically, we want to send a packet from here to here. Let's think about the packet that is going to be sent from host one to host three. So let's list the source IP, destination IP, source MAC and destination MAC. So source IP, that's going to be 192.168.1.10 destination IP. That looks like a D, no, it's IP. And then that is 
2.10. And then for the MAC address, I'll have to write it here. Source MAC, we have a little bunch of zeros. And then a couple of ones here. Now for the destination MAC address, what is that going to be? Is it this one? No, it's not because they're in different subnets. So that packet will have to be forwarded to the router. So it's going to use the default gateway. And therefore we need the MAC address of the default gateway, which is actually not listed here, but it would be here. So we don't know this, but let's just say it's like an X. It doesn't matter right now. So now when this packet comes to switch one, how does it decide which link, which actual physical link to use to forward this packet? Is it going to be Ethernet one slash one or Ethernet one slash two? Well, this is based on a process called hashing. We can talk about that more in a little bit. I actually have a nice document from Cisco to show you and we can go over it in detail. But let's finish this part first. So now the method that a network device uses to perform the hashing is called a hashing algorithm. Now hashing algorithms are platform specific, meaning that they will change depending on the type of switch. And also they are considered proprietary, meaning that Cisco will never release the hashing algorithm they use in their products to the public. So we don't know the exact magic that happens inside the switch when it chooses the link to use to forward the packet. We do have some information though, but again, we'll get to that later. Adding a quick voiceover here. For this example, we are considering source and destination MAC address load balancing hashing algorithm. So now with this information, let's say that the switch has selected Ethernet 1 slash 1 as the port to use to forward these packets. Let's write that down here. So Ethernet 1 slash 1. So now if that was the only traffic occurring between these devices, you can see that only one link will be used. Ethernet one slash two will not do anything in this case. It's just sitting there passively waiting for Ethernet one slash one to fail so it can take over basically. So the traffic is not distributed evenly in a round robbing fashion sending one packet out Ethernet 1 slash 1 and the next packet out Ethernet 1 slash 2 and so on. The switch will select one port for the traffic flow and use that. The switch will use the same port for the entire packet flow. So now what if we have host 1 communicate with host 4? How does that change our information? Well, first of all, and most obviously, the destination IP is going to be different. So we're going to be using this one, 192.168.2.20. So let's fix that in our packet. Let's erase this one. And we'll write the 20 there instead. Now, what about the rest of the packet? What's going to happen with that? Well, the source IP address is still the same. We're communicating from host one source Mac address will be the same and the same with the destination Mac, which is going to be the Mac address of the router of the default gateway. So then as a result, this packet flow will also use the ethernet one slash one port. So even if we have two completely different traffic flows, they are still using Ethernet one slash one. 
And once again, the bandwidth on Ethernet 1 slash 2 is not used. Adding another voice over here. To summarize, since the source and destination MAC address hashing algorithm is used and those values do not change for the different packet flows in this case, the algorithm will select the same physical port to forward all the packets, even though they are ultimately sent to different destinations. So this is why it's said at the beginning of this post that port channels can increase the bandwidth between two network devices, but this isn't always true. And here you see exactly why. Okay, now let me remove this drawing here and we can look at the load balancing algorithm in more detail. Let's get rid of that, close it. And actually, let me scroll down this post a little bit so you can see some stats that Chris has demonstrated in this blog post. So down here, you can see the link utilization right here in this screenshot. So in his example, the load balancing algorithm chose Ethernet 1 slash 2, and you can see the packets here. That number is huge. Uh, but in the other one, it's zero. So here you can see the problem clearly. Two links are available, but only one is being used to forward traffic. Now let's jump to the Cisco document that I promised earlier. This one, understanding ether channel load balancing and redundancy on catalyst switches. Let's scroll down a little bit. Over here, we find the good stuff. Let's look at this line right here. The Cisco proprietary hash algorithm computes a value in the range 0 to 7. With this value as a basis, a particular port in the Ether channel is chosen. What does that mean? Let's take out the pen tool again. Now let's imagine you have four links in an ether channel. So I'm gonna draw them like this. These are my beautiful ports. This could be like gig zero slash zero, zero slash one, zero slash two and zero slash three, it doesn't matter. So now we have the numbers from zero to seven Now these numbers are assigned to the ports as evenly as possible. In this case, it's very convenient because we have four links, so they will be evenly distributed. So let's say they go like this. This port gets zero, the next one gets one, the following one gets two, and the fourth port gets three. And the same with the rest, so four, five, six, and seven. So now when there is a packet, the switch is going to run its hashing algorithm, do its magic, and a number is gonna come out, a number in the range of zero to seven. So let's say number three. That means the switch is going to use this port for that particular traffic flow the packets will be sent out using that physical port. Now let's say that there's another traffic flow with different input going into the hashing algorithm and the number four comes out. So then that means that the switch is going to use this port or this link instead. So that is essentially how the load balancing algorithm works. Now, if we look at the table in the document, it lists the ratios of the values that each port accepts, which depends on the number of the ports in the ether channel. So now you can see if we have eight ports in the ether channel, the load balancing will be evenly distributed on all those links. And each of the ports will get one value. So in our example, where we had four ports, each port got two values. 
So then if you pay attention here, you'll notice that some of them are not evenly distributed, like if you have six or seven links. So some of the ports will get more values assigned to them, and hence they are more likely to carry more traffic, be more utilized than the other links. And this is just mathematics. You can't distribute eight values evenly over six different ports. Some of them will have more numbers assigned to them. And that's why it's recommended that you use an even number of ports or more specifically evenly divisible numbers for the port channel, if that makes sense. So you should use either two, four or eight links because then those values can be assigned equally on each port. So as you can see here, if you have two ports, both of them will have four values. And if you have four ports, all of them will have two values assigned to them. And as I already mentioned, if you have eight ports, all of them will have one value assigned to them. Okay, let's get rid of this drawing and move forward. So let's move down this post a little bit. Now there is a command in Cisco iOS that you can use to check what port the switch is going to use to send those particular packets that belong to a certain traffic flow. And this may be outdated information here, but the command should be available even on newer iOS versions. So if you look at this one, you get an idea. So here it has selected uh, port one slash one. And actually if I scroll down further, this is referring to Cisco iOS. So maybe this is something more like it should be. It says would select gig six slash one of port channel one. The command may be version specific as well. I cannot tell you, I haven't verified this information. So you can look into this yourself or I might get back to you on this at another time. So next, what load balancing algorithms are available? So let's look at this line right here. I'll highlight it for you. Ether channel load balancing can use MAC addresses, IP addresses, or layer four port numbers, uh, and either source mode, destination mode, or both. The mode you select applies to all ether channels that you configure on the switch. And here you can actually see the command to change the load balancing method. So you can see there's a lot of options to configure, but which one to choose really depends on your network. So here it says, use the option that provides the greatest variety in your configuration. So to get the best utilization for your port channel, you have to analyze what kind of traffic goes through the network to figure out the best algorithm to use so that the traffic is distributed as evenly as possible. So if you remember those numbers from zero to seven, we want as much variety as possible. Ideally, we'd want an equal amount of zeros, ones, twos, threes, and so on. So let's go back to Chris's post. And let me go back to the scenario up here. Let me get the pen tool out again. So let's briefly summarize the problem that we had before. So host one was uh, sending a packet to host three and then also to host four. And I think I forgot to mention this part, but we would use the source and destination MAC addresses as the hash. like so. So now when those two values are going to be used as the input to the hashing algorithm, they're going to produce the same output value. 
which then means that the packets will be forwarded out the same port. So then load balancing will not occur and the other port will be completely unutilized. Actually, I have a fun analogy for you guys about the hashing algorithm. Do we have any Harry Potter fans here? So what I like to think is the sorting hat. So let's draw some image here. Let's see. Well, I guess that's kind of looks like the sorting hat. Um, so now what you have is some input coming into the hat. So there's this source Mac and uh, destination Mac coming in. And the, and the sorting hat does its magic and then spits out some number, it could be five, with some other input, it could be two, and then one and so on, whichever. So that's kind of what I imagine. We don't know exactly what happens inside the hat because that's proprietary information. But a number comes out and then that number is used to define which port will be used to forward the packet. Okay, enough of this nonsense. Let's delete the drawing and move forward with the blog post. Let's close this like so. Let me go back down to the parts where we had the screenshots right here. Okay, so in this image, you saw the terrible packet distribution between these two links. Nothing is happening on Ethernet 1 slash 1 and Ethernet 1 slash 2 is handling all the traffic. Now, actually, if you look a little bit up to the screenshot above, you can see the poor channel load balancing algorithm in use. It is source and destination Mac. I should have pointed this out earlier. Anyway, let's move along and let's see what happens if the load balancing algorithm is changed. So let's find that here. So Chris has actually changed the load balancing algorithm to use the layer four header. And you'll notice that the traffic is distributed much more evenly right now. If you look at the packet counters on these ports, you see that they're almost equal. You will probably never get a perfectly equal distribution of packets, but you can see that if you choose the load balancing algorithm correctly, you can get very close. So as mentioned there as well, with this traffic pattern, we should be able to squeeze full bandwidth out of the port channel. For the rest of the blog post, Chris talks about the hashing algorithm in detail. The same stuff we already covered before. So that is going to end our discussion. I hope this video has been informative and useful to you. Once again, thank you to Chris for this amazing blog post. I'll share links in the description, so look for those. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.